All right, fan fest number one for Dawn Trio came and went. We have two more to go, but let's have a chat about this one, shall we? Everyone has their own thoughts, ideas, and what they are most interested in. So let's give mine. If you like what you see, please rate, comment, subscribe, and maybe follow my socials or Patreon. Also, obviously, spoilers for Endwalker. If you are not currently caught up on Endwalker, you will be spoiled. Starting off, obviously we have the trailer reveal. It looks really cool, obviously. After what happened with Endwalker, I can see the robot lyrics are not going to stay, even if I feel it kind of fits with the vacation vibes of the song, but it sounds pretty great already. And in it we see Meteor in his Will Turner cosplay. A lot of ideas came out of this, and Yoshida's shirt hint. In the trailer we see him only use a short sword. Obviously there's more to it than that. At the end, it looks like his hand is floating on whatever the next thing is. Given this will be a scouting melee and he looks like a pirate, people are thinking this is Corsair, which makes a lot of sense. Though we should talk more about that. Another melee? Really? While I am all for filling out the gear set roster more, this is so soon. We just got Reaper, and we're already getting another melee. I don't think most people expected this. I know some people on my job favorites video were asking for a melee so soon, and I was easily dismissing it because, again, Reaper. But it's 100% confirmed, we are getting a melee, and a scouting melee will fill out the gear so ninjas can play more than one job. So yeah, I'm super shocked. But anyway, my first reaction was thanks to the shirt reveal. Yoshida is wearing Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which Leo is in the front, wielding two swords. Seems pretty Weapon Master or such to me, or other possible Twin Blade using jobs. And given this is a land where the Mamul Jaw are finally being showcased, and many Mamul Jaw use Twin Blades, well, makes a ton of sense to me. For Mage, the big idea currently makes a lot of sense too. Pictomancer, because TMNT are all named after famous artists. Leonardo, Donatello, Raphael, and Michelangelo. So Realm from Final Fantasy VI. Can we get the sketch glitch too? I want to cast sketch, and then every other pool my party will get completely covered in random statuses and wipe. Though truthfully, my first reaction to the sword and what our mage is was actually Spellblade. He's using only one sword. We have a mage confirmed, and he gets fire thrown on him. Fuse that fire to your sword. Boom, Spellblade. I was gonna laugh so hard if my tentative guess of Blitzballer and Spellblade came true, but then they said another melee and... Really? No ranged DPS? It's the role I find most boring right now, so I guess it makes sense, but like, there's gonna be a new tribe based on Final Fantasy X, so Blitzballer would have made sense. Though Yoshida also said, no Blitzball. Probably also means no Blitzball a job ever. Then he revealed Fall Guys. My initial reaction here was, Fall Guys still exists? The literal last thing I ever heard about it, the only thing I'd heard about it in years, was that it went free to play. That's it. I've never played it, this won't get me to, but I definitely know the game is still around. Our side of the crossover is going to be free MGP is what I'm seeing. I've seen you all trying to do Leap of Faith. I know how bad most of you are at jumping puzzles. Unless I get paired up against, like, Pint or one of the other Kugane Tower speedrunners, I see an easy win ahead. But, like, Fall Guys still exists? We also got some very big possible hints that this will be a Final Fantasy VI based expansion if it isn't Final Fantasy X. Pictomancer aside, the big ancient dragon of Tural is called Valagamanda the first Esper you run into in Narsh. And in a way, they are gonna parallel the world of Ruin. The story will split up the party as everyone takes their own sides. While that is not what happens in FF6, the party does get entirely split up. We've already killed Kefka, so we don't have that to worry about. But also, this is a tropical place, so I don't know how many areas they could use from 6. Which makes me more think we'll be seeing more of a hybrid of 6 and 10. A lot of areas in 10 are tropical, and I can't really call any areas in 6 all that tropical. Unless, like, the Velt counts, but the Velt is basically one city and an excuse for Gao's mechanic. So hey, maybe it's Beastmaster and limited jobs are dead, eh? 
The story? I am very glad they're not gonna try to do anything close to Endwalker. Some people are having the weird take of like, this is 14's beach episode. Like, yeah? Is that not like, good? We literally just saved the entire goddamned universe. There needs to be a power reset. Like, our power can't be reset. We're permanently the seat of Azem now. Hydaelyn's final champion. Midgard Zemir tried, we're not losing the Blessing of Light. But in terms of threats, everything is a beach episode now. Even the current storyline with beating up Golbez and Zeromis is a beach episode. Dude's small fry next to the arbiter of the entire universe's end. But also, One Piece is a single thousand episode long beach episode. And that's like the biggest manga ever and forever hailed as a masterpiece. And that's what I've been calling Dawn Trail, our One Piece. We're sailing to an island to take part in a succession war that splits up our entire group into smaller factions. I believe that's actually something that has happened to the Straw Hats once. I'm not a One Piece reader. All I know is basically secondhand from my cousin. But like, this is basically One Piece? And if the new melee is Corsair? The translation lead also came out and said that any fears of this expansion being insensitive, don't worry. They realize they have not been good at it in past and are working to improve on it. And don't bring up 16, that one is spoilers. Now let's talk the graphical improvements. I didn't really mind it all either way, but seeing the current progress? Yeah, I'm uh, pretty convinced. Especially that Il Meg comparison? Holy crap, is that a huge glow up. The area looks so much better. I'm sure my videos will see a nice improvement visually secondhand too. I hope so at least. I try to make viewing experiences good, but this will be nice for that. Generally though, this looks super nice and will make the game look so much better. Level cap increased to 100, this should have been expected. If we're doing 10 more years of game, we need to go over level 100, nothing else works. No, level 99 with specs doesn't work. It'd be straight line still because specs and skill trees are inherently imbalanced. New lifestyle content akin to Island Sanctuary. Yes, please. I love the Island Sanctuary. I wish it was better than it was, more involved, but I quite love this kind of content. Also, thank you to the person in the live letter who said about increasing the pasture size. But we also need cropland too for our feed creation. We're gonna get more variant and deep dungeons in Dawn Trail. That's cool. Nothing more to say until we've seen them other than... Let's hope that there's more rewards, because anyone who says that there's a lack of content in Endwalker is objectively lying. There's a ton of content. The problem is longevity and rewards, so I hope we see some better rewards and such. The biggest thing people cheered for in the entire keynote though... Two die channels. Not all gear, but that any gear is getting two die channels is huge for glamour fiends. Nothing else came close except for when Soken came out afterwards. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> More interesting to me is the glasses thing because... There's also a furnishing limit increase for all like 20 people in the audience who got houses. But all this comes with the fact that they need to increase system requirements. PS4 is still being supported for a while to come though. Along with the biggest news of the entire keynote, 14 on Xbox. That is huge. Even if it's a small bump only, we're going to see another player bump this coming spring. That is so huge. Phil Spencer looking like a bigger villain than any 14 villain has been though. But at the least, every Xbox player will be able to try a free trial up to level 70 because the free trial is now up to Stormblood. Holy crap! They went and did it! You can now become a legend and do ultimate content on the free trial. That is so extremely, infinitely generous of them. How do you just go and give that all away? So huge, and it's coming in 6.5, not even during Dawn Trail, just next major patch. Raid Planner thing? They only showed one screenshot, but hey, that's kinda amazing will make explaining stuff way easier, hopefully. And maybe we won't need paste bins anymore? They will still exist, but we can move more to in-game tools.
Then the next day was the 6.5 live letter. This is where we had the single most hype announcement of the entire fanfest. Because really, there was very little we haven't already seen a million times before. The story has some really hype stuff we'll see, but like, more story, cool. More Mandeville, that sucks. And it sucks because he's coming back for Dawn Trail, because Hildebrand is boring and dumb, but at least we're getting a Tribal Alliance quest. First, we had the hype announcement that the best trial in the game is finally coming to Unreal. Thornton Extreme is by far the best trial the entire game has ever had. Shinryu Extreme was bad. Hades Extreme, neat, but not that great. And Singa Extreme was just there. Thornton? Hard, exciting, and the best thing they've ever made. I love it. They're finally expanding the armor to store optional items. I assume that means Mog Station, which, yes, that's been needed forever. There's been no reason for those to not be allowed in the armoir. But then, the biggest, most important thing they have ever announced. I will let the clip speak for itself. <laughs> oh, yes! Oh my god! People have, for years, been saying that this won't make any difference. Alright, put your money where your mouth is now. Go queue for Alliance Roulette again. I'm sure like me, you stopped. You didn't want to do Crystal Tower for the 500th time. So prove it. Prove it with still only seeing Crystal Tower. Because meanwhile, I'm the guy who got Crystal Tower repeatedly because of people going without gear. Majority of those runs had at least one person zoning in naked because they didn't realize it's based on when you queue, not zone in. And if that many people don't realize you can put your gear back on, even more know how queues work knew how to abuse them, and before you try to say, oh, now they just won't queue at all, good. All it takes to get Crystal Tower is one person. One person of those 23 other people to make them all get Crystal Tower. And you want to know what the other half of the equation is? Relics. It was stupid that they made us do Crystal Tower as an option for the Resistance Relics. It should have been all the other Alliance raids. Because that's what relics end up doing. They fill queues. People do the rapid spam for the tokens, do it daily, whatever. But they would fill queues. You want to tell me that the issue is Crystal Tower being the only required raid? Prove it. You're still going to see it plenty, but go and see how not better it is. Because for every one of you veterans I've seen complain about this raid or that raid... I've seen 10 Sprouts in the Novice Network trying to do these raids that nobody does anymore. They never do them anymore, never get queues for them, because most people were getting shoved into Q Cheese Roulette. Meanwhile, I think I'll be enjoying seeing things like Dunskase again. Anyway, that's my thoughts over FanFest. I didn't really get to see stuff like the contests of PvP, too much other stuff on my plate between life and all. What are your thoughts? I'm looking forward to new jobs and hopefully a new direction for the story. Take care, and may the power of Ananid Hogs lay waste to your enemies. And as usual, I gotta give an extra special thanks to all my patrons over on Patreon, with the extra special thanks going out to... Altrios, Eamon al Khatib, Benjamin Han, Benjamin Rice, Bergy, Karsten Wayward, Ethan W., Frasier97, Jeremy Abbott, Jericho, Kevin Lowe, Mizella, Shana, Shimmering Blaze, T-Rogue, Timmy, and zero two. Thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed. See you all for the next one.